This is going to be finding Jesus Christ in the ark. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is Noah and the ark. It is amazing how you can find so many similarities between the ark and the Lord Jesus Christ. The ark is an excellent type of Christ in the Bible. But look at Genesis 6, 14. It says, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. So first we see that the ark is a type of Christ, and that something had to die for the ark to be made. Trees had to die for it to be possible for Noah to even enter into the ark. The same for us today. Jesus Christ had to die a horrible death on the cross. They hung him for our sins on the tree. He became sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. If Jesus Christ didn't die, we wouldn't be able to even get into Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our ark today. 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Romans 5.8, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died so that we would have a chance to be saved and be put into his body. For Noah and his family to live in the ark, trees had to die and trees had to be cut down. Just like Jesus Christ, he had to die. 1 Thessalonians 5.10 says, Who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. These trees had to die because of the ungodly. If you read Genesis chapter 6, the Bible says man was corrupt and the earth was filled with violence. There was one righteous man, and this righteous man named Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. However, Noah wasn't sinless himself, and there has never been a sinless man other than the Lord Jesus Christ. If Noah didn't get in the ark, he would have perished with the ungodly and went to hell. He showed his faith by his work. He built an ark and boarded the ark. If he didn't get in the ark, faith without works would have been dead, as it talks about in James. And look at 2 Peter 2.5. It says, And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. If Noah didn't get on the ark, he would have been part of that crowd that died and that was ungodly. Likewise, Jesus Christ had to die because we are ungodly. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5, 6 says, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. If man never fell and sin never happened, then Jesus Christ wouldn't have even had to die. But he died for the ungodly. But next we see a type of Jesus Christ in the ark because of the window. Genesis 6.16 6, says, A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And Malachi 3.10 talks about the windows of heaven. So there are windows in heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ is. The harlot in Joshua binded a line of scarlet thread in her window so that her and her family wouldn't be killed. And this pictures Jesus Christ's blood applied to the sinner so that he doesn't have to burn in a lake of fire one day. And he doesn't have to burn in hell the second he wakes up after death. So I believe windows in the Bible have connection to the Lord Jesus Christ. Also notice the ark had three stories representing the three heavens with Jesus Christ being in the third heaven. And then look at Song of Solomon. Chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, it says, The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, showing himself through the lattice. So the ark is a type of Jesus Christ because of the window. Next, we see that the ark is a type of Christ because of the door. Uh, Genesis 6.16, A window shalt thou make to the ark, 
and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. Notice that the ark only had only one door. If they wanted to get in the ark, they had to go through that one door, and that was the only way to get in. Just as how today Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. He is the door. John 10, 7 and 9 says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The door is open for anybody to come to Jesus Christ by believing the death, burial, and resurrection. It doesn't matter what you've done, how many times you've denied Jesus Christ. If you know you're a sinner, you know you're going to hell, and something in you is telling you to get saved, then you're under conviction and you need to get saved. It doesn't matter if you're a sodomite or a pedophile or a Bible rejecter or an atheist. If something in you is telling you you're a sinner, you're going to hell, and you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, then you need to get saved right now. And the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15. The gospel is this, Jesus died, he died for me, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you want to be saved, believe that. If you want to go to hell, then don't believe that. The reason you need a savior is because you are a sinner. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, so believe the gospel. Many want to wait until the door is closed, and then it will be entirely too late to get on the ark. People in hell right now are trying to get in the door. They're down there saying a sinner's prayer. They think a sinner's prayer is going to save them. They're begging God to save them. But they waited until the door was shut and it was too late for them. Also notice that the people who didn't board the ark, they died. In Genesis 6.17 it says, And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. They refused to get in the ark, so they died. I believe everyone who didn't board the ark went straight to hell when they died. Just as how everyone who doesn't get in Jesus Christ goes to hell when they die. People who refused the ark died, went to hell, they're still in hell, and they stayed in the earth. As the verse talks about, before they, before they died, they refused to board the ark and they chose to stay in the earth, in the, out in the world, instead of doing what they were supposed to do and get on the ark. Notice it says, and everything that is in the earth shall die. They chose the earth over the ark. And people who choose this world over Jesus Christ will stay in Adam and keep their sin nature. 1 Corinthians 15:22 says for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. This could also picture a worldly Christian who wants to stay in the world like these people are said to have stayed in the earth. And it, you're not going to lose your salvation if you're saved by choosing the world. But you will be brought to an early grave for not getting in the book, doing service for the Lord Jesus Christ, praying, and doing what you're supposed to be doing. You'll be brought to an early grave. Next we see the ark is a type of Jesus Christ because of the covenant. In Genesis 6.18 it says, But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. God made an agreement with Noah and his family, and they got into the ark. He says, come into the ark. That's what God said. So Noah was saved in all of his house. The same thing goes for us today. If we believe the gospel, God makes an agreement with us, and we are saved by believing that gospel. After this, we get our family in on the gospel, and in on this saving power that the gospel has. Noah got his family to enter into the ark with him. And just like today, we need to get our family to the Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. 
So after you get saved, you want to tell your family how to get saved. Genesis 7, 1 says, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark. For thee have I seen righteous before me in this generation. So we should get our family in, just like Noah got his family in. I'm sure the road to getting Noah's family into the ark wasn't the easiest thing in the world. I'm sure he prayed and witnessed to them, and they probably wanted to give up over these 100, 120 years time. I'm sure they thought he was crazy, just like they're going to think you're crazy, possibly. And they probably didn't want to leave all their stuff behind, just like your family doesn't want to leave the things of this world behind. Just like Lot's wife, she didn't want to leave things behind. And next we see that the ark is a type of Christ because they got fed in the ark. Genesis 6.21 says, And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be food for thee and for them. So Noah and his family didn't go hungry. And I'm sure people who didn't board the ark had to leave their things, leave their food, and run up into higher ground. So they weren't getting fed. They were too busy worrying about getting away from the flood because they love the things of this world. It's the same today in that you can't get fed by the word of God until you get in Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Unbelievers, lost people, can't get the sincere milk of the word or the strong meat of the Bible. But Noah and his family were well fed in the ark. If you have read the book of Exodus, then you see how the manna came down from heaven. And you see how that's a type of Jesus Christ. This is because Jesus Christ is the bread of life. And he supplies all your need. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. John 6.35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Once you get in Jesus Christ, you won't be hungry or thirst spiritually, because he supplies all your needs. Noah and his family were vegetarians, so people weren't eating meat until after the flood. Noah went through some troubles and trials and stayed close to God on the ark. Then when he got off the ark, God gave him some meat. Look at Genesis 9.3. It says, Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. It's the same for us today. We need to labor in the word, go through troubles and trials in this life, uh, staying in the word, our flesh doesn't like to study at times, but we push through it anyway. And we start out with the sincere milk of the word, and then God will open up the meat of the word for us. Hebrews 5.12 says, For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Hebrews 5.14 says, But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So we need to start out with the sincere milk of the word and then move on to the meat. A lot of people want to strong start out with the meat and not even start out with milk or care about milk. But next we see that the ark is a type of Christ and that there are more clean animals then there are unclean animals. Genesis 7, 2 says, Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. It's the same thing for a born-again believer. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you, and if you are reading the words of God, praying, and doing your best to live right, the good things you do are going to outweigh the bad things that you do. Our new man wants to do right, but our sinful nature still gets the best of us at times. 1 John 1 8 says, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Our flesh is unclean, but now we have the inner man that wants to do right and makes us ashamed of sin. 
Romans 6, 21 says, What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Next we see the ark as a type of Christ because God shut them in. When they got on the ark, God shut them in the ark. In Genesis 7, 15 and 16 it says, And they went in into the went in Noah into the ark, two and two of all flesh, wherein is the breath of life. And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. The same is true for us today when we get saved. God seals us with the Holy Spirit of promise. The devil can unseal me. Sin can unseal me. Romans 8, 38 through 39 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ephesians 1, 13, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So the ark is a type of Jesus Christ because God shut them in and when we get saved today and we're put in the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit seals us in. And next we see the ark as a type of Jesus Christ because the ark is lifted up above the earth. Genesis 7:17 7, says, And the flood was forty days upon the earth, and the waters increased, and bare up the ark, and it was lift up above the earth. The same is true for us. One day, all born-again believers will be lifted up above the earth to the third heaven at the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18 says, But I would not have you, have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So, just as the ark was lifted up above the earth, one day at the rapture, the dead in Christ and every living saint will be lifted up above the earth and meet the Lord in the air. But next we see Noah is a type of Jesus. Noah's ark is a type of Jesus Christ because it brings you safe through the storm. If you look at Genesis 8, 1 through 3, it says, And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained and the waters returned off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. So God brought them all the way through this storm until the waters were gone off the earth. And in Mark chapter 4, Jesus calms the storm. He can control the weather. Nahum 1.3 says, The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm. As Christians, we go through trials, temptations, and storms. But if you trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will come out safe on the other side. Notice that nothing could sink the boat. The Bible says in Genesis 6 that there were giants in the earth in those days. I'm sure those giants beat up on the door and tried to tip it over and break it, but they couldn't destroy the ark. And you may have a giant in your life today, like a besetting sin or another person who's giving you a fit in your life. And these things seem to get the victory over you. But if you're in Christ, nothing can take away your salvation. Nothing could take away the ark. Noah's family probably had doubts on the ark, but nevertheless they were safe on the ark. We have doubts in our Christian life to the point that some may even quit believing that God loves them. Some ask the question, what if a Christian quits believing? Will he lose his salvation? Even if he quit believing, he couldn't lose his salvation. It doesn't matter. The family, the Noah's family was still in the ark. And they can't get out because they've been shut in. We can't get out of Jesus Christ. We're still into the day of redemption. If the devil can unseal me, you think we can unseal ourselves? 2 Timothy 2.13 says, If we believe not, 
yet he abideth faithful. He can he cannot deny himself. So even if you quit believing, Jesus can't deny himself. You're part of his body. Next we see the ark as a type of Christ because it had a first and second coming. Just like Jesus Christ has a first and second coming. Jesus Christ touched the earth the first time when he came the first time and he's going to touch the earth again at the second coming. Just like the ark in Genesis 8.4 it says, And the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of Ararat. The ark was on the earth the first time when Noah built it on dry ground. And then you see it again here the second time in Genesis 8.4. Jesus Christ came to the earth the first time where he was a root out of a dry ground. Isaiah 53 2 says, For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He's coming back to get us at the rapture when we meet him in the air, and he is coming back to touch the ground again at the second advent where he will slay all the God haters. Just like the flood was unexpected to all the mockers and scoffers, it will be just like that at the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ comes as a thief in the night, just as the people in Noah's day had never saw a raindrop until that day of the flood. The Lord's army will invade at the end of the tribulation, and after this there will be an unordinary type of rain that will bring back the earth to a Garden of Eden-like state. The earth will be like it was when Adam and Eve was here. If you read Joel 2.23, it says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. So just like there was a strange thing happened then where rain came down for the first time, there's going to be a weird kind of supernatural, unordinary type of rain that happens in the end of the tribulation when Jesus Christ comes back with his army destroys all the Muslims the God haters the false gods the rains gonna come and the millennium is gonna begin and the ark is a type of Christ because the dove is a type of the Holy Spirit Genesis 8 7 through 9 says and he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground, but the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot. And she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. Verses 10 and 11, And he stayed yet at other seven days. And again he sent forth the dove out of the ark, and the dove came in, to him in the evening and lo in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off so no one knew that the waters were abated from off the earth when jesus got baptized the bible says john saw the holy spirit descending like a dove upon him so the dove represents the holy spirit notice this that noah sent out the raven first before the dove he sent it out before he sent out the dove and ravens picture unclean spirits in the Bible. The raven went to and fro. Like the Bible says, Satan walks to and fro. The raven, raven was probably out feasting on the dead carcasses. That's what ravens do. And unclean spirits are obsessed with death. The devil possessed man in the gospels was always in the tombs. In our Christian life, if we will pray these devils out of our lives... And get them out of us and die daily, beating down the flesh, then the Holy Spirit can really begin to work in our life. Just as Noah sent out the raven before he sent out the dove, before the dove could help him do any work, bring back the olive leaf, he had to get rid of the raven. If you would like to get in today's ark, the Lord Jesus Christ, you will need to believe the gospel. And the gospel is a very, very important, I'd say it's the most important part of the Bible, and many people don't say anything about the gospel. I try to do or say the gospel in every study. And the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, 
I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So if you want to be saved, believe the gospel. Realize you're a sinner according to Romans 3.23 which says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible lets us know that if we aren't saved, we will go to hell when we die. In Luke chapter 16, the rich man died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. Hell is a literal place of fire and torment. You don't want to go to hell, so believe the gospel. Realize Jesus took your place on the cross. It should have been you on the cross for your sins. But Jesus Christ became sin for us so that we wouldn't have to go to hell for all of eternity. So if you want to be saved, believe the gospel. If you want to go to hell, reject the gospel. It's that simple. But I hope you'll be saved. And after you're saved, memorize this gospel and tell it to everyone.